Bismillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Inshallah, the purpose of this series, Amazed by the Quran, is to highlight some of the resources, books, and my own research and insight that I've come across that has really left me personally amazed by the Quran. One of the first books I read, it must have been now 12 years ago, uh, is a really awesome book by the name of At-Tabir al-Qur'ani by an author in Iraq uh, whose name is Samir Rai, Fadl Salih as Samir Rai. He's written several books. I actually got introduced to his personal life and his story a little bit later. I'll tell you a little bit about it. He was just just like master of Arabic language, you know, super duper PhD literary linguist, uh, head of like several university programs in Arabic in, in Iraq back in the day. This is pre-war days, of course. And he writes in his own memoir that uh, in his younger years, he actually had a crisis of faith. Everybody around him is praying. Everybody goes to the masjid, he hears the adhan every day. Of course, he's living in the Arab world in Iraq, but he actually didn't know why. Like, why, why do we believe in Islam? Why do we believe in the Quran as the word of God? I don't really know why. So on the one hand, he was really proud of his Arab heritage, but on the other hand, he was not so sure about his Islamic heritage. Right? And actually, interestingly, he, he describes his crossroads, what was going on in his head that he was afraid to say to people. He spelled it out like this. He said actually that, you know, I was at a point where it was either a life of deprivation or a life of pleasure. And then he explains himself. And he says, well, if, you, if I follow this Islam thing, then it's going to tell me not to do certain things. Things that I really want to do or, you know, whatever I want to eat, whatever I want to drink, whatever I want to do, wherever I want to go, that's no longer the case. It's going to put some blocks in my path. And if I don't listen to this Islam thing and I just do whatever I want, there's this life of freedom. And I'm not going to be young forever. I'm going to die eventually. So these youth, these years of youth that I have, I want to be able to get the most out of them in life. And it seems as though if I pick the path of Islam, it's going to block those pleasures from me. Now he says, well, I, but I still, because this is part of my heritage, people all around me believe this stuff, I want to be able to justify to myself, not just, I don't want to be able to say to myself, I picked the path of pleasure only because it's the path of pleasure. I want to be able to justify to myself that I abandoned the heritage of my family, you know, the people around me. I abandoned this, this faith tradition on good intellectual grounds. So he says I, you know, he decided to study the Quran critically, okay, on his own. I'm going to just read this book on my own. And by the way, already uh, like a super genius in Arabic, right? And he's interested in really defining and refining his craft in the Arabic language, again, because he's super proud of his Arab heritage, like he's very proud of being Arab, right? So he's, he does this critical study. And the more he does this critical study, the more he becomes convinced that this is not the product of human creativity. He comes to the conclusion, as amazed, he gets in himself, an Arab gets amazed by the Arabic Quran and says to himself, this can only be divine. He furthers his Arabic studies, he furthers his Quran studies. And he starts writing several books. Actually, the, the memoir I'm talking about, this journey of his youth, is actually in the intro to one of his books called Nubuatun Muhammad bin Ashak ila al-Yaqeen. The Prophethood of Muhammad, وسلم, My Journey from Doubt to Conviction. Right, which is a really beautiful title. And he basically describes, look, this is the journey I was going through myself. I'll, I'm able to talk about it now in retrospect. So he says the more he studied the Quran, the more he discovered that this is just absolutely remarkable. It's unlike anything I've ever come across. And by the way, he's also got pretty extensive credentials in other Semitic languages. He knows Hebrew, he knows Aramaic, he even knows like he's done research in Babylonian. Like he's a linguist all around, you know. So he starts doing uh, uh, like research and he starts producing works on the Quran as literature in the Arabic language. And even though that's a subject of interest of Muslims to Muslims for, for thousands of years, you know, 1500 years of a legacy of studying the Quran linguistically. He's bringing a fresh angle to it because he didn't come from a traditional Islamic studies background. He didn't study the standard books that give you a certain mindset and then you approach the subject. He's actually coming at it totally from, I just love Arabic and now I'm into Quran studies. So even though he developed and furthered his Quran studies, he brought a, you could say a fresh eye to the subject. So this is one of the first books I, I read from him, at tabir al-Qur'ani, which actually means the Qur'an's style of expression, how the Qur'an expresses itself. And the more I went through this book personally, the more I realized, man, there's so much stuff in the Qur'an that is when you, when you translate it, you totally miss it, 
It's like just not there. And if you just saw the, what, what's going on in the Arabic, you'd be just amazed. And so this, this inspired the, you know, what's going to be this weekly series. What I'm going to try to do in this series, inshallah, is I'm going to try to take from these kinds of works. At Ta'beed is one of them for sure. There are others uh, like it from this author and other authors, right, that have literally just written books about what amazes them about the Qur'an. That's all they've done. And much of this is in the Arabic language. So what I want to do is I want to take that stuff from the Arabic language and be able to distill it kind of take the, some of the cool examples from it that are easy to explain in English, that you don't have to have background in Arabic for, and to give you these snippets every, every week, inshallah ta'ala. Because these are the few things, these are the gems that the more I studied them, I just became obsessed with the study of the Qur'an. One last thing I'll share with you, is that when I myself became a student of the Arabic language and studying tafsir and studying i'jazul Qur'an it's called. I'jazul Qur'an means the miracle of the Qur'an, roughly translated but also the overpowering nature of the Qur'an. When I became a student of this subject, much of what I learned, I was told by even my teachers, well, you know, the more advanced stuff, the really juicy stuff, you got to know Arabic to be able to appreciate it. You can't really do it if you don't know Arabic. And I, okay, I agree. I've been, had I not learned the Arabic, I wouldn't have been able to appreciate it. But that doesn't mean that I can't take that stuff and present it in language that just anybody can at least get a taste. Or this is the kind of thing it's talking about. I think people can handle it. I think you can handle it. I think you can get it. If I could just, my job is to try to make it accessible, but, but I think it can be made accessible enough that you can appreciate it. And at the end of the day, I feel almost obligated to want to share this stuff because if I found something that really profoundly impacted my faith and my confidence in this book and you know, my relationship with the Quran, uh, then I would want to share that with you. you know? I would want to be able to, for you to taste that, some of that too. And I'm hoping one of the motivations that comes out of this, my agenda for those of you that are going to follow this series inshallah every week, is that you A, become more curious about the Qur'an. It makes you want to study the Qur'an more for yourself. It makes you want to ask more detailed, critical questions, you know, reflective, thought-provoking questions about the Book of Allah. What is it, what is it saying to me? You know? I want to be able to help you foster that relationship with the Book of Allah. The second thing I want to do is encourage you to actually learn Arabic. Because it's possible, it's not hard, it, it really isn't. I was dumb in school, man. I, had, I did not have good grades, I did not, I'm not some genius or not, I know what I am. Okay, my parents know it better than I do. <laughs> but if I can learn Arabic, anybody can learn Arabic. And if I could teach Arabic, oh, forget it, anybody can learn Arabic. Anybody can. So if, and if you have the motivation that you want to learn the Quran, to, and that's why you want to learn Arabic, I swear to Allah, He'll make it so easy for you that you'll be shocked at yourself. So I hope you guys become uh, a part of this journey with me. Once again, the series is called Amazed by the Qur'an and more than anything else, it is about what amazes me about the Qur'an. Thank you very much for listening. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.